Hello everyone, this is Wolven Sister, and I'm back with another little tutorial here. This one is just gonna basically teach you about fur flow, and that's what I'm here to teach you! Yay! <laughs> this is my second tutorial, so I'm sorry if there's any mistakes, and I'm sorry if I stumble over myself. It's just sort of just how I work. But, um, yeah, I'm basically just gonna teach you fur flow because that's just the basics. I don't want to start you off with crazy complex stuff like cell shading and soft shading and layers and you know all that crazy other stuff that goes into fur so we're just gonna start with the basics of fur flow just so you get an idea and maybe you can experiment in your own time so right now here all I have is this picture of uh, my it's promotional artwork uh, from my comic Moon Lit Dawn but this is what we're gonna do the fur flow on yeah it's a pretty crazy drawing <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is basically what, what we're gonna focus on, but I'm also gonna, uh, direct you to some photos I have here in this one. But we're gonna focus on this one a little bit, just so you can get a realistic sense of fur flow, because, because, you know, I started out doing realistic drawings, they weren't that great, but I started out doing realistic drawings and then, then I sort of developed my own style. It just kind of helps you get your head in the game. It kind of helps you, be, helps your knowledge be a little more rounded and stuff. So I just figured it would be better to teach you realistic fur flow and then we'll go on to the soul shading uh, cartoony cur fur flow. So I, so I have this photo here and we're gonna get started on it. Um, let me just check and see if my inks and stuff are all good. Yeah, they are. Um, so as you can see, you can kind of see the direction of the fur, and if you have any pets or whatever, uh, you can also observe from them. The the fur direction I'm going to teach you kind of kind of works for pretty much every animal. It just depends on the fur length for each animal, because you know every animal has their own different fur length. <laughs> So, yep, ink is all good. <laughs> so here on the muzzle, it's sort of short, small fur. It's it's tiny, tiny little furs. Um, and it just sort of goes in one direction. It just goes up, 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 in the direction of the bridge. As you can see, I'm just doing little tiny arrows here to simulate the length of the fur and also the direction it's going. Granted, it's tinier than that, but you know, what can you do? <laughs> and then when it goes up to the bridge, it becomes a little bit longer and it just keeps on going up, as you can see. And then we have the little eyebrows here and they sort of just go in a sphere. And the eye I then the further eyebrows just go up. <laughs> And then here we have, I just call this the forehead. I don't know exactly what it's called, but it just sort of goes out like that. And remember it's layered, so so you don't want to to uh, to just do one layer and call it good. It's fur, they gotta keep it warm, and they gotta they just gotta keep it going. So so it just sort of fans out like that and as you can see, it sort of goes down a little bit towards the cheek. And that right there, that's what I call just the cleft. I don't know if it's called that, but I just call it the cleft. And it usually has little tiny hairs. I don't usually do anything really with it other than shading, but if I'm in the mood, I'll just do little tiny hairs like that. And call it good. And leave it on the other side of the forehead. It just sort of fans out towards the ears and towards the cheeks, but over the cheekbones, as you can see, there's some definition there. And it's sort of it's sort of the same length as the bridge. It's just small and it just sort of goes down. And you got the little the little eye pockets for less from like that. Like that. over by the nose and these little lines are they're, they're essentially arrows just you've got little lines for for the lip of the muzzle I just wouldn't worry about it unless you're doing realistic drawings <laughs> um, when I'm cel shading on 
I don't usually worry about it. I just do a few like little hairs just to simulate that that there's hair there. But unless I'm doing a super realistic drawing, I don't I wouldn't worry about the lip hair. Cause then you'll just spend hours. <laughs> and yep, it just sort of goes out onto the cheek. And this right here, I just call it the triangle, because that's just my geometric shape, I guess, I gave it. And it just sort of fans out like that in, in a point of a triangle. <laughs> so up at the ears, they're a little bit different. Um, so as you can see, the, the rim of the ear is about the same size as the cleft of the forehead. It's small and packed in tiny little hairs. So it's just tiny, tiny little hairs all packed together, and they all kind of go up. But here we're looking at the pocket. I don't know what that pocket is for. I think it's for, like, uh, cooling off the ear or whatever, but I can't remember. <laughs> but, but whenever you're drawing, you want to make sure you have that pocket. And at the bottom of the pocket, the fur just sort of junctions like that, and inside the ear, it just sort of goes in, and they're a little bit longer. And the rim of the ear, again, they're just tiny little hairs that just go in the up direction. This, yep, and then the back of the hair, the back of the ears, I'm sorry, just sort of go up. They're a little bit longer. And then they got little chin hairs. <laughs> they just sort of go down. Again, they're tiny little hairs. <laughs> Okay, so now we are on the neck. And the neck, it has a little bit of longer fur, and it just sort of goes out like that. It starts tiny at the top, and then it just sort of goes in longer strokes as it fans out. The back goes towards the spine, the side goes towards the chest and the shoulders. And they just get longer and longer, because because the the neck is wh whenever you see a wolf in a fight, they go for the jugular. So the neck is like a vital area for the wolf. So so there's a lot of muscle, there's a lot of cartilage, there's a lot of you know important arteries and stuff, and it just sort of goes. It it. The, the fur there is really thick, is what I'm trying to say. It's really thick, and, it, and the reason why it just goes in all these crazy directions is just to protect the jugular of the wolf. And the front of the neck just sort of goes out, fans out like that, so there's a lot of curving. So as you can see, the, the wolf fur so far just kind of goes in whatever direction it feels like. <laughs> kind of where like the muscles break and the bone breaks, but you can kind of see the back goes towards the spine and the front goes towards the legs. So now we're on the section of the shoulders. And these, these are a little bit, sh th these are about medium length and they just sort of go towards, they, they go towards the chest, they, they, they go towards the rear of the animal. <laughs> on the chest, and the chest just sort of goes out like that. And remember, wolves have very narrow chests. Um, this is just to help them catch their prey faster. But if you want to add in a chest, and, and if you're doing it from the side view, I recommend going up like that in that direction. But otherwise, if you're doing it side view, like this one here, you just kind of just go down. And so we have the legs, and oh my god, the legs are such a pain because they're just a bunch of little hairs and a bunch of little directions, and it's such a pain, especially when you're doing realism. But here you can see the little wrinkle where the wolf has, where the wolf lays down. And these are just little hairs that just go in the down direction. You got little elbows, and those just sort of go up towards the elbow. And you got more little tiny hairs. They sort of go down. And here you got the back of the leg. The back of the leg, um, kind of changes the direction of the fur on it a little bit because yep so here it just sort of goes up and up in the direction of the elbow and this is because when a wolf lays down it goes it goes back towards the elbow because they're laying forward so that's kind of why the fur changes a little bit and you got 
a little more fur on the paws, and then you got fur on the claws, and it just, you know, it sort of overlays on the on the claws, because they're wolves. They don't got time for grooming and stuff. <laughs> so now we're on the back, and it all just sort of, for the most part, goes in one direction. Um, here you can see the back and the chest just sort of goes in one flowing direction. The spine. The spinal fur is a little bit thicker. And that's because when a wolf is in danger, they'll raise their hackles. I mean, up there towards the shoulders and the rump are the most prominent and the most you'll see, but they also raise a little bit on their back too, just to make them seem bigger than they actually are when they're in threats. And, and you'll see it in cats and like other animals too. I think bears even raise their hackles. But as you can see, you can kind of see the length of the fur and those strokes there. And those natural strokes in the photo. And we're just going to follow their direction. And the more we get towards the stomach, the more we go down. Now when a wolf... I, you can kind of see the break in the stomach a little bit. Where, where it definitely starts going a different direction. Um, but when a wolf is running, uh, the fur sort of just goes towards the back, towards the flank and stuff. But when they're standing or when they're sitting, obviously when they're laying down, it just sort of goes down in the down direction. Okay, so now we're going to focus on the hip area. And the hip area is a little bit defined as you can see here. You can see the start of the thigh, you can see a tendon there. The hip is is like the most sensitive spot or one of the sensitive spots on an animal. And you can see the, dif the difference with the fur there. Um, what I usually do is, is, uh, is I draw a little line right there just to help remind me that I'm... I, there, there's that hip there. And it's just to help me with the fur direction because it sort of fans out like that. And and you can see it if you if you um like like part your animal's hair like part your animal's fur there, you can see you can see the roots and you can see where which direction they go in. And on the stomach you can see the break and it just uh, goes towards the back some more and then we're on the rump now. The rump just go towards the tail and they just get longer and longer. As you can see with the strokes here that are already in the photo and also my arrows. We got some fur coming back towards the stomach on the thigh there. So here we have a definition. As you can clearly see there's differences between that definition and 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 the complete rear. And this is because this right here is a very, it, it's a tendon, it's a, it's a big old tendon. <laughs> so you can see, you can see uh, its difference in fur and how it slopes and everything. So just, so just kind of keep that in mind when you're drawing, that there is a tendon there and sometimes there, there's even a break when, when you're drawing it. And you just follow the fur direction, you just keep going towards the back. And you just got long, long furs, <laughs> long hairs. <laughs> and then basically, the hind legs are essentially the same as the front. You got the hind. If you if you if you do the front legs, you're good for the hind legs. <laughs> and then we got the tail, and it's sort of fans out like that and it just gets longer and longer. The tail is probably honestly the funnest part because it just gets longer and it gets bushier and it's just all sorts of fun and I love the I love the direction it goes. But that is the realistic sense of fur flow learning from a photograph. Um sort of like a jumbled mess right now. <laughs> but when you're drawing and it makes more sense. <laughs> So just, uh, I mean, just look in, look in different textbooks, look in documentaries, 
go out and see some animals and see how they move and everything just so you feel more just so you know more of what's going on and here I wanted to show you a little bit of a close-up of fur flow on a head just just to kind of reiterate of what I just did with the big old picture and because I just wanted to show you a profile version just because it, it shows a little bit of a little bit more detail on, on fur flow so here we have the ear, and the little rim, and the little tiny hairs that just go up, even on the other one. Here we got, we got the back of the ear, and it just goes up. This right here I think is the pocket, and it just separates, it divides the fur right there. So it just sort of fans out like that. And we got the forehead fur right here. Got the cheekbone fur, it's all tiny and it's all going up direction. Same thing with the muzzle, it's just going in the up direction. And the back of the neck, it starts out small like I like I demonstrated in the last picture, but it, and it just gets longer. But in this one you can see the strokes a little you can see the natural fur uh, direction a little bit easier than the last one, so that's why I'm showing this one to you. And it just gets longer and longer and it just sort of goes in a curved direction because he's looking he's turning his head so it's curved if he was looking straight it wouldn't be as curved you got the little cheeks then you got the side of the face where it makes that little awesome little triangle <laughs> you got the neck and again since he's turning his head it all sorts it all kind of goes in the same direction but now we're back to this still, this drawing of mine, and I'm basically going to help you translate all that realistic fur flow into a cell shaded version. Because obviously cell shaded is not as detailed as realistic illustrations, so we kind of have to improvise a little bit. So here I'm just going to teach you um, how to translate it, how to make it easier. We're going to go up. We're, we're still going to go in the direction up on the muzzle towards the bridge of the nose. And they're still going to be tiny. And then we're still going to do the circular motion on the, on the uh, eyebrow. Things go up. The cheekbones go down. <laughs> the cheekbones go down. The cheekbones go down. <laughs> Then the little chin, the fur goes down, <laughs> and on the cheek it sort of fans out in a curved direction towards the triangle. <laughs> and then on, oh, I don't know why I decided to go a completely different direction on that. <laughs> See, even I don't know what I'm doing sometimes. <laughs> um, it just sort of goes down, and and then the interior of the ear goes down, the rim of the ear goes up, and then on the neck, the back of the neck, it just goes down and out, and it gets longer and longer. We even change the direction a little bit since she's, since there's arteries and parts there in the fur, and as you can see there's arteries and parts there on the, on the back of the neck, so it just goes up, it kind of goes up in a curved downwards fashion, and then we're on the shoulder blade now. And it just goes down. The fur is about medium length. We have the back of the shoulder going towards the elbows now. As you can see, there's the back of the leg there where the fur kind of hangs off. And then we got the little elbow there. We got the crinkles, so that just all basically just goes down towards the paws and the claws and the digits. Okay, 
so now we're gonna go on the back even though they're a combined monstrosity <laughs> but we still do the fur on the back and the spinal stuff so it just sort of goes back towards the rear and when it gets closer to the stomach and the closer to the chest it just sort of goes down in the direction of down Sometimes I do that little curve there just to help me just to help me know which direction I need to go in. And just because it's going down and towards the rear doesn't mean the stomach fur will always go in that direction. Just because as you can see she's kind of folded in half, so she so her stomach fur kind of goes in all sorts of directions. But we're at the hip now. And the hip just goes out, spans out like that. And if you remember, the thigh fur from the hip kind of flays out like this, and it just gets longer and longer as it go towards as it go towards the leg. Then we got the rump. This over here is just the tendon. I, I usually put in those lines, those fur lines, the tendon line, the neck line, and the shoulder lines, just to help me, just to help me center of where I need to put the fur, because sometimes I need reminders too. And yeah, the leg just sort of goes in that direction with small little furs towards the paws and the claws. And then, so we have this little chunk of section up here. For the, for the rump, where they where some of their hackles are raised, and this is thick, and it's also kind of long, and it just goes in the direction of the base of the tail. And the base of the tail just goes downward. I put this little line there just to kind of remind myself that there's bone there, because the whole tail isn't just, isn't just hair, or it's and the entire tail, hair and all, isn't just bone. It's it's bone and it has hair hanging off of it. So I just kind of have that there to remind myself where the bone is, especially on tails because they're thick. So we just go down towards the tip of the tail and it just gets longer and longer. And then there you have it. Uh, this is This is the basic essential fur flow that I do for cell shading. It's a lot less detailed as cell, as realistic strokes and as for talk and as you know real life animals obviously. But that's because it's cell shading so you kind of have to you kind of have to lessen the detail. <laughs> but you know I I still recommend you to go out and learn as much as you can. Don't just watch this video and don't just take don't just take one source of material as, as the end-all, be-all advice when it comes to fur or any sort of thing you want to learn. Learn as much as you can. Learn from documentaries. Learn from books. Go out to the library and get some art books. Um, there is this one book that, that I used that, that I checked out. It's called Drawing Wildlife by J.C. Amberlin. It's an old book. It came out in like the 90s. So you can find it anywhere. You can find it at the library, Amazon, anywhere. And, and it's a great book. It taught me fur flow. It also taught me about wildlife anatomy and stuff and fur length and everything. So I recommend you check it out. Um, I'll put a link for it in the description below somewhere. I'll also put um, links uh, of what helped me learn and and see, and see if any of that helps you. So, so yeah, I mean, just get out there and do your thing and experiment, observe, learn, take notes, do all that you can. Um, don't just, don't just, you know, take my advice in front of the computer screen. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, that's all I have to teach you right now. Uh, I do plan on doing a cell shading tutorial either next week or the week after and if not and then i plan on doing grayscaling and soft shading and all those other crazy tutorials but that's all i have to teach you for now um if you guys have any questions comments concerns suggestions definitely leave them below or message me anywhere on online i'm, e I'm easy to get in touch with and i'm everywhere online so yeah just feel free to contact me anywhere really and uh i thank you for watching if you want, you can subscribe for more videos, and I will see you next time.